All right, all right. Hello, everyone. So we are actually doing a slightly different video today. Uh, we are going through my favorite wheels of 2022. Now, every wheel that I've tried here uh, is basically on this list. Um, there is one wheel that I do want to try, which is the new Extreme Bowl um, X-Men. Uh, I have not tried that. But basically, these are all the wheels that... Um, oh, there is one other wheel I haven't tried on this list, which is the Abrams. Uh, but I'm going to judge that wheel based off of the reviews and what I know. Uh, again, everything in this video will be um, my own personal thoughts, my own personal feeling on where I feel like these wheels rank. So S will be the best and D will be basically don't get it. So if that helps. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So first we have the EX20S. Now this is a 3,600 watt hour electric unicycle. This isn't really fully out on the market yet, I would say, but I have had the chance to try out this wheel at Pagode. It is a prototype, so I won't be too harsh on it, but I will have to say, given what I, you know, my experiences of riding the wheel, it's so heavy and it moves like a freaking ox, which doesn't, it doesn't turn well, it doesn't break well, it doesn't accelerate well. It is basically your only high range option with suspension. So if you want a extremely long range wheel with suspension, well, you're going to get the EX20. I'm going to put this as B. It's not exciting. It looks ugly. It doesn't maneuver well. Um, I do put it here because it is the highest range wheel with suspension. Now let's look at the hero. The hero is next, the Bagode Hero. The Bagode Hero is not a bad wheel. Uh, it has speakers, which is different from the Master. Now, it's a 100 volt uh, setup rather than the Master's 136. But this wheel is too expensive. It is a great wheel. It rides well. Um, it has more plastic, I would say, uh, less cushion parts than the Master. Um, the, the Hero is a good wheel. It's just, I think the biggest downfall is the price. It's just not at a good price point. I think they have dropped it, but with the Master out, you won't be seeing many of the Heroes anymore. It is still a good wheel. I still really like it. Um, so I'm going to put that on A. All right. You guys already know the accent. Do I have to say anything more? Basically, no one has this wheel. And that's for a good reason. This is probably one of the biggest failed products uh, I've ever seen uh, of any brand. This wheel came out and it had so many issues. I won't go into it, but D. The Extreme Bull Commander. Now, this is your long range option without uh, suspension. This wheel is a 100 volt wheel. However, um, it's for those people who want to go those extremely long distances. It doesn't ride all that fun, I would say. It's just if you're going out for a really long ride. Uh, I do like the wheel. It's definitely one of the more expensive wheels on the market. I think it's something like the top three most expensive wheels given the battery that's in there. It doesn't offer anything unique. Um, and with its styling, you would think that maybe it's very veteran Sherman-esque. So I would say I'm going to put it in... Uh, B, I would say. I'm actually going to move the EX20S down uh, just because of how poorly it rides. All right, the Master. Uh, if you guys have seen my video on the Master, uh, link will be in the description. The Master is a great wheel. I love this wheel. It's so powerful. This 20-inch wheel will ride like a 16-inch wheel. What I mean by that is usually you have to make the sacrifice between purchasing a 16-inch wheel with better torque or a 20 inch wheel with higher speed stability. You don't have to do that with the master. You get that 16 inch torque in a 20 inch uh, size. So you get the high speed stability as well. Okay, the XN. The XN kind of came out uh, by accident um, due to how poorly the X failed. Uh, so they basically just removed the suspension on the X and there you have the XN. The XN is actually surprisingly a very good wheel. Um, it's a little bit top heavy. Uh, they could have made it lower, but in terms of performance, it is, I think I would say one of the first wheels 
this big that offers really good torque. The offers really good torque. I know New York City riders love this wheel. So I'm going to put this in a B. It's just nothing special. It's just nothing special. But it does stay there because, well, it's a... Uh, it's 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 it still offers great torque, um, but really nothing all that special about it. Okay, the MCM five, fun, probably the funniest looking wheel on the market, the egg shaped looking wheel, the MCM five version two. Now the MCM is basically, uh, in terms of like wheels, you could compare it to the fourteen S or uh, V eight. They're small wheels. They're small wheels. Uh, very compact, but the Gotway brand, obviously, uh, lots of power. So not really picked up by many people. I think if you're looking for a 14-inch wheel, you want um, usability, convenience, and this wheel really doesn't offer that. It's got a flimsy handle. It's funny looking. Um, it doesn't have um, the features that you'd kind of want a convenience wheel to have. So I'm going to rank this in C. Even though it offers... Pretty good performance because you know it's a bagoed, but for the market that they're trying to reach with a 14 inch wheel, it doesn't do it well. Now we have the 14s. I don't talk about the 14s very often, but uh, if you ask me about it, I would say that this is a very good wheel. It's a bit outdated, for sure. It's a bit outdated, but this wheel basically has speakers, has you know. 840 watt hours so you'll be able to get easily 30 kilometers you have front and rear lights you have a very good trolley handle the padding is a bit um poor it kind of you have to get used to it It kind of hurts your shins um but a uh, very very good wheel very very good wheel now the monster i know people like sean are gonna go crazy but i really don't like the monster it reaches i just think there's no need for a wheel this big um you have these big boys now. You have the Commander 20-inch uh, with long range. What is the monster doing there? Uh, it's so inconvenient. Um, you get such crappy torque out of it. Sorry, C. Just not a very good wheel. Now, the 16X. I'm not being biased to King Song, but honestly, the 16X is such a good wheel. It's been one of the best wheels. I mean, it had a poor launch. You know, if you don't know about it, watch Kuji's video, but now that, you know, we've few generations on, the 16X is a very, very good wheel. Fantastic torque, a bit disappointing and a bit outdated perhaps that it's limited to 50 kilometers an hour, but a very good wheel, very good speakers. You have good bass on it too. Very convenient. It kind of does it all. I'm going to put this, yes, in the S tier. One of the best wheels, one of the best wheels you can have on the market. I would still purchase this wheel. Probably if I were to purchase one wheel um, as my commuter wheel out of any of these wheels, I would do the 16X, hands down, hands down. Um, okay, the M10. The M10 is a funny wheel. I do really like this wheel. I think it's one of the most unique wheels out on the market. It's the only 10 inch wheel. It's very nimble. It's so light. I use it. I have it personally and I use it to take take it from me my where i live to my parking lot which is a bit far and um, it does a great job i can pop it in the trunk uh it has really poor lights it's hard to control um if you don't know what it's it's a bit unpredictable because of how small the wheel is so the terrain kind of pushes you around but such a unique unique wheel but for the reasons i mentioned i'm gonna put this in a a tier very good wheel so worth looking at I'm just, I might not buy brand new. If there's a used one, definitely pick it up. But brand new, it's a bit pricey. Now the Nikola. I've had the Nikola for about a year and a half before I gave it off to my friend. The Nikola is, in terms of bigode build quality, the best out there it is for them. Um, they're 16 inch wheel. It's basically their competitor to the 16X. Their competitor to the 16X. Uh, great looking LEDs. Construction is pretty good. Really didn't like the um, Emotion S candle where it comes comes of uh, it kind of comes up from the top. Don't like that. Whenever it falls, you're risking breaking your handle and 
Yeah. Um, great speakers as well. Uh, room for mods. So if you got to put like little modules in there for, you know, different LEDs or, or whatnot, there's space for that. Um, the wheel maneuver is kind of funny, but a very good wheel still. It's a bit top heavy, but once you get the hang of it, that's actually a very good wheel. Just, just a really good, it's a good looking wheel um, with the LEDs as well uh, for those that care. The 16X, I think, does it a little bit better, but the on the Nikola, I think it's brighter. Okay, the RS. I'm going to put the RS, hands down, S tier. Simply for the fact that this wheel is basically an M Super X with upgraded components. This wheel is the wheel that kind of changed everything for me. Before I bought the MSX, I had 16A, I had 16S. And this wheel really, I think for a lot of people, showed them what EUCs can do. People started jumping, people started hitting curbs. It's not the most durable EUCL on the market, but it is such an iconic wheel. It's still one of the better selling wheels out on the market. Even though it's outdated, it's still one of the better looking wheels. Keep in mind, poor construction and uh, crappy waterproofing. Even though it's been improved, uh, still something to worry about. But because of how iconic it is and how important it is to the EUC industry, I'm putting it up there. All right, now we have the Tesla. The Tesla, I've owned one of these. Flimsy handle, really flimsy handle. Uh, you have this plastic that wraps around the top to cover the LEDs. Again, their answer to the 16X, really, um, really torquey wheel. The newer version has higher pedal clearance. Um, I don't know, just nothing special. I'm going to put it in B tier. Now, Inmotion V10. Inmotion V10 is an old wheel. Old wheel, very nice LEDs. Really wish they integrated the uh, ha handle into the casing like the, they did with the V8. But they unfortunately did that. So I'm, I'm going to have to take points off there. Um, overall, very good wheel, uh, but wish it also came with speakers, um, but very good finishing quality. Um, I just don't, I think at the price point, at this price point, you're dealing with EUC enthusiasts. So you're not dealing really with, um, how do I say this? You're not dealing with uh, commuters who really want like, uh, better finish and stuff like that, which is why I think at this price point, people are basically looking at the RS. People are basically looking at the 16X. So that's why I'm going to put this in this, in this tier. Okay. Now the V11, Inmotion's first suspension wheel. Now this 18-inch suspension wheel um, got a lot of slack at the start, very much like the S18 in its early days. They are pioneers in the EUC suspension, so uh, they are bound to have mistakes. Um, but I think in terms of overall ride experience, the wheel is so balanced. Um, you have cells basically going around the entire shape of the wheel. So you can brake and accelerate very easily. Um, they did have issues with the saddle. Very powerful headlight. It looks very cyclopsy, but I think of... A very, very good wheel. I love this wheel. Um, yeah. The S18. The S18 had just as many issues at the start. Um, it has more moving components in comparison to the V11. Again, many generations now on, the S18 is uh, much better. Much, much better. It does have a more, it does have a better suspension. It does have a better suspension than the V11. The V11 is very bouncy, but I mean... If you're just commuting, then you won't really know the difference. But if you do like big drops and, and you know, really go off road, then you'll feel that. Now, the S18 has a lot of downfalls, you know, battery sag and, and all that. Very cool looking wheel. But I'm actually going to put this S18 lower than the V11. Just because there's so many plastics, there's, there's so many things wrong with it. Maybe it's because I know too much about the wheel. Maybe it's because I worked at Kingsong. But um, to be honest, I prefer the V11 over the S18, even though the S18 has better suspension. Okay. 
Now let's talk about the V12. V12, we have the high torque and the normal V12. So the V12 is, let's, sorry. The V12 is the first wheel to have a touchscreen um, screen. It also has these LEDs on the side. It's a 16 inch wheel. It's kind of, the, again, the competitor to the 16X, which is why I put the 16X up here because there's so many wheels out here that I see as a competitor to this um, 16X, Kingston 16X. This wheel has speakers, um, not the loudest. It has that weird uh, speed sound thing where it's like if you accelerate, it makes this like cyber sound to match your wheel speed. Uh, kind of gimmicky. Um, it's okay, I would say, this wheel. It's not, I don't know. I would probably still get the 16X. I don't know why I would want a touchscreen. Um, and if I do want to see a speed on my wheel, then like a speedo on my wheel, then I would want something bigger. Um, yeah, just not the most exciting wheel. Um, so I'm going to put this in B. Just really like, eh. High torque makes it a little bit interesting. I think when you're dealing with 16 inch, people want torque. People don't really want speed. Um, Science holds you back, you know, 16 inch wheel, you're never going to have that high speed stability. So have, giving it more torque is definitely better. And for anyone that hasn't tried the Inmotion V12 high torque, this wheel is nuts. Um, it accelerates really quick. They've done something with the programming where I think it gives you more than you tell it to. Um, it overcompensates and not in a bad way. So when you accelerate on, on road, it accelerates very, very, very quick. Um, but if you're going off-roading, um, I tried the latest version just about a week ago, and they've done a lot of protection in terms of protecting its own components, and that kind of draws it back um, because of how they've implemented so many things to protect the motherboard and all the components. It kind of limits its torque when you do actual off-roading. So this is a great wheel if you're doing commuting. But if you're like expecting a high torque wheel that offers you um, very good torque for off-roading, it'll probably start beeping at you very soon. So giving you all kinds of warnings, tilt back and, and stuff like that. Okay. So that's why I'm going to put it in the A tier. Better, better than the normal V12. I do like the HT version. It also has an orange rim. Uh, not sure how you guys feel about that. I think it's kind of cool. Um, instead of all these aluminum silver rings or black, you get this orange rim. Again, you can spray paint it if you don't like it. Okay, V8. V8 is probably one of the most successful wheels um, out on the market. If you're stepping into the market and you realize 1400 is not gonna be enough for me, basically the wheel I suggest for everyone to start with or to pick up used is V8. This is S tier wheel. And not my, it's not the most high performance, but it's not the most high tech, but it does what you want it to so well. It's compact. It's got nice, beautiful LEDs. It's got a front headlight. Um, yeah, actually, is this? Sorry, that looks like the, is that the V8 or the V5? No, that's the V8, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, wish it had speakers, but um it is, it is cheaper, I believe, than the 16S, which comes with speakers. And I don't think the 16S is anywhere near as good, nor as successful. Uh, the handle is a big thing. The tuck away handle, where it's like a spring mechanism, V8, VAF, and I think there's a new uh, extended range V8 now. Um, definitely very good wheels. This is the 14D. 14D we haven't seen a lot of. Um, it's basically your very, very budget wheel. It's okay. Um, it's cheap, but there's a lot of marketing, I think. And this, this shape is overall just a bit um, outdated. I would say it's a bit boring. Um, it works well on the 16S. Um, I think I, I like the longer battery packs on it. It's 840 watt hours. But the 14D, um, I don't know, kind of just doesn't do it for me. So I'm going to put it in C. 16S. Now, I have a close relationship with this wheel. Uh, this is basically the wheel that I had after the E+. Um, this wheel, 
again, had so many issues. If you guys don't know, very early days of King Song, wheels were launched in kind of order of King Song uh, wheel size. So KS wheel size, which would be for this wheel, K16, and then it would be ABC. It would be the earliest or the oldest version, and then B and the C. And then sometimes there was a D and then be an S. They don't kind of do that anymore. But I had the 16A and I had the 16S. Very good wheels. Allowed me to ride uh, quite a bit of distance. Um, very good waterproofing because the motherboard sits on top. But in today's day and age, I would not consider this wheel. 35 kilometers an hour. Uh, very outdated design. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put this probably just here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to leave the X just kind of hanging in the D tier, but it's such a crappy wheel. Um, yeah. Okay, 18XL or 18L. Uh, maneuvers well, has speakers that aren't that loud. Uh, they work, but if you're going anything above like 25, 30, you're not going to hear them. Uh, handles really well. It's got that uh, battery configuration where it basically goes around the entire shape of the wheel. So um, the wheel is very well balanced. Um, it's kind of your, before we got into all these fancy wheels, the 18 XL was kind of like your long range wheel. You could do like easily 80 kilometers on this. And, you know, it's due to the, the way King Song, you know, throttles their power, but it's, it still had enough. Um, but yeah, till back at 50, 50 or so, um, very, very iconic wheel, but outdated. So I'm going to put this over here. And we're ranking this by today's day and age or like if there's anything significant. Okay, S22. S22. Master is here. S22. I'm going to put here. Kind of hurts for me to say it, but if you guys have seen my master review. Well, the S22 does look sick. And... I guess as a performance rider myself, even though I'm not the fastest guys, but um, this wheel in terms of maintenance is such a headache for me. If I go out off-roading, my wheel starts creaking and I hate that. I absolutely hate it that I have to maintain this wheel as often as I do. So I'm not, I'm not interested in that. That's not why I buy an EUC. It does have the best suspension system out there, but I would still buy the master a master with an upgradable suspension would be just as good as this. So that's, that's my personal thought. If you guys, you know, feel that's, that's different for you, then feel, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Okay. The Abrams, the Abrams is like the monster, but I would say worse. So it's going to go here. Why is that? Because they've had so many issues at launch. I'm not really sure why Veteran made this wheel, to be honest. Um, you're already tapping into a very small market with the tw with the big wheels. There's not many people that want that. And it doesn't have a huge battery pack. So I don't understand why you'd want a wheel this big without long range. And so what is this wheel? They advertised initially as off-roading. There was no way you were going to off-road it. It didn't, you weren't going to off-road with it. It had such little torque and there's been so many issues that we're still going through it. Maybe in the future, if we do like an end of 2022 um, video, if you guys like this kind of video, let me know and we'll do one maybe at the end of the year and maybe this gets moved up. But for right now where it sits, just poor. Veteran Sherman, do I have to say more? King of wheels, straight to the S tier. Straight to the S tier. This wheel basically um, took everything bad about Bigod and just encompassed it all. High-speed stability, reliable firmware, reliable hardware, and a reliable shell. This wheel may not appease to basically everyone, but that roll cage allowed people to mod it, you know, put on your headlights or whatever you might want to put on your wheel, speakers, uh, water bottle carriers, um, but it also acted as a uh, protection cage for if you crash. This wheel is so, this is the first wheel really on the market 
to think about, okay, we're now reaching speeds of higher than 50. How are we going to protect this wheel? And that's kind of where the S22 came, right? That's where you got the front bumper and, you know, trying to go minimal and keep it more like, look at all these wheels before. Very plasticky. You crash, plastic clips breaking off, some covers flying somewhere. Um, but yeah, nothing fancy. It was also, when it, re- when it was launched, the fastest wheel on the market. It was the first wheel to have a screen. And to this day, it still has one of the better screens that you can see. Um, like large, large display. So, so yeah. Anyways, this concludes my video. This concludes my ranking. If you feel that any of these are unjustified, feel free to leave uh, your comments down below. Let me know what you think should be moved. Um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. If you guys like this video, please leave a comment, like, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, these Again, these are just my thoughts on the EUCs that uh, I've tried besides the Abrams and the X-Men, which I haven't put on the list here. But, you know, don't come attacking me. This is just purely my thoughts. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.